<clears throat> Mike check one two one two. Mike check one two one two. This is not financial advice. I just tell you a bunch of them, baby, because it's about to get hot in the kitchen. Now, don't invest in companies you don't understand and don't believe in, because if they dip, you're not gonna buy the dip, and then you're gonna sell low and be right back here crying to me. And I'm not having that. No. I'm not having that. So if you can't do the heat, eat these hot stocks and stay out of the kitchen and consider investing in index funds, we got to talk about Microsoft. Now, I'm not telling you to buy, hold, or sell. I'm here to give you the facts and you be the judge. But hold up. I know you see that it's 313 and you're thinking to yourself, man, this stock is already high in price. No, hold up. Remember it's all about the percent that the stocks move over time. It's not just about it being $300. You could actually choose to go and buy $100 worth of this or $5 worth of this buying what's called fractional shares. You got to understand that thoroughly. Because if I buy $100 worth of Microsoft in 2023, and then you go buy $100 worth of some penny stock or something like that, and again, we trade penny stocks, that's fine. And we look back, if you held on to yours and I held on to mine, it's very likely that mine is going to be, let's call it in a year later, when we look at the stats. And let's go see the stats right now. It says that in a year, Microsoft is up 20%. My $100 would have been $121, meaning that this is outperforming the stock market, which is up about 5%. And it even outperformed Apple at this rate, which is up about 19% in the same time frame. So my $100 would have been worth $121. But if you was in some penny stock or something else, let's say, and it underperformed the market, it could have been down 20% rather than being in something that's big and safer, relatively safer, like Microsoft. But let's get into it. I'm not telling you to buy it, hold it, or sell it. I'm going to get you the facts. I'm going to show you the news going on with it. And then I'm going to show you an account that I've been loading up on Microsoft for a long time with. And I got a few thousand dollars in there. I just wanted to show you how dollar cost averaging has really been impacting it because I haven't even been looking at this account. And if you just watch my previous Apple video, it's very similar to that. But I opened it up and I'm like, oh, wow, that's great. So let's check it out. So Apple. Oh, hold up. Rewind. That was the last video. Microsoft is 313 at the time of this recording. This is a stock that I DCA into dollar cost average. I just buy it at regular intervals. What's going on with it right now is it says that a billionaire basically pumped $430 million into Microsoft and NVIDIA based on bold artificial intelligence bets, right? Artificial intelligence or artificial intelligence, excuse me, is taking over the world, family. It's taking over the world and it is what it is. And I'm going to show you really what's going on with it and why these billionaires is betting so much money into it. It doesn't mean that it's going to pump up like crazy overnight, but you just got to understand it. This episode is brought to you by the Moomoo Investing app. Get up to 20 free stocks. And I'm going to come back to this, but I want to just show you something real quick that I've seen on the Moomoo app. And what is it? It's this. When you go to Moomoo and you look at articles, I just recently found out that it can read it to you. So if you are driving and you like to listen to podcasts or you don't necessarily want to just read it yourself. It can read it to you. You see this little thing right here. It says, following the money, analyzing 100. You know what? Let me not read it. Let me have it read for you. Turn your volume up. Listen to this. Following the money, analyzing the 100K Congress traded on Microsoft. Over the past three months, Congress has traded over $109.00 worth of Microsoft. Congress is trading Microsoft stock. And I'm just doing the research on Microsoft and I'm reading it. And then I see this thing. Again, I'll move, move. I click it, it says it's going to read this to me for two minutes. It has the robotic voice, but I don't got to read it. And I can just listen to it, whether I'm on a go, whether I was going for a run or driving a car. I don't have to read it. I can just get all of the information quick and I can see how long it's going to take. And that's huge for me. Somebody that's researching stocks all of the time, very thoroughly. And I'll show you how to do it real quick. Basically, you go to anything and any kind of stock, you look at the news for it and you'll see a little headphone indication. You click on that and then this thing can pop up right here and it's just like a, a media player and it'll just play it right through and it'll play it for the two minutes. Now, you go to news on the bottom, you'll see all of the articles. This is the bottom of the app. You'll see all of the articles and here's an even better picture so you can see it. You click on one of the articles and next thing you know, boom, you go click on this and tell you how long it's going to take and then you can hear that just recording and just telling you it could even read you the headlines if you don't want to listen to the whole article or it could read the whole thing to you it's up to you but you get to see it for yourself and like i said before download mumu put up to however much money you want on there i encourage you to put at least a hundred dollars on there so you would get the high majority of the free stocks and they got an exclusive offer where they give you the four free stocks the one free stock plus the five on the exclusive family so go ahead lock that in and let's get it now let's get back to what's going on with microsoft check this out 
We already talked about how Microsoft is putting so much money into chat GPT so they could own a lot of it. They invested $10 billion into the company, the parent company of chat GPT, OpenAI. For those of you that don't know, chat GPT is basically the main artificial intelligence that they're saying is going to replace a lot of jobs coming forward in the future. Now, when you go to Microsoft's website, what you're going to see is, family, they are really, really all in on this artificial intelligence. It says we are in the era of AI right now aka computers that can at least what appears to do is think right artificial intelligence now we going through the slideshow over on their page on microsoft it says discover a new way to work so they're saying that they're going to change the whole game of how people are working right and i'm gonna give you some job a list of the jobs that they're saying that are going to be impacted by this and then some that might surprise you so now this is the this is it right here when i seen this i was like oh I'm just scrolling through what Microsoft's talking about. This is gonna revolutionize sales. That's what it's all about. That's what it's all about. It's about, you know what? You have a product or a service and you wanna sell it. How do you make money? You gotta basically make it for a certain price and then sell it for way higher than what you purchased it at or what the price of it actually is, right? So you can make some money on the difference. So if they're gonna revolutionize sales, how are they gonna do it, right? You always got the buyers and the sellers, but what's gonna happen now is on the giving the service side, let's say that you need them to tell you some information. Let's say you need them to build you a product or do something. They're gonna make that way, way, way cheaper on a corporate level. Let's take a look. Because when you look at the history, it says right here, how are they gonna make it really cheaper? Even in 20, or actually not even 2020s, 2013, University of Oxford study found that 47% of jobs could be eliminated by artificial intelligence over the next 20 years. We are already 10 years into this family and this is starting to come to fruition. We are starting to see these things happening and Microsoft is trying to get ahead of it so that they can beat their competitor, Google, which is also trying to spend a lot of money on it. So now let's look and see, oh, Microsoft is sticking to their word. It says Microsoft employees, and this is as of May 10th, 2023, are not getting a pay raise this year. Oh wait, didn't we just say that they're trying to revolutionize sales? If they're giving you a service, let's say Microsoft computers or Microsoft Office or whatever kind of service they're giving you, if they make it cheaper for them to run the business because they're using artificial intelligence, then they're not going to value some of the people who are working there and they're not going to give them a raise. They're not going to give them these bonuses because they say, you know what? Your job can be replaced by somebody else. If you're a programmer, if you are doing any kind of data entry or anything like that and many, many other jobs, then they're saying, how can we pay you less and actually let's switch out? Just like with self-checkout, when you go to Target, Walmart, wherever, you can see it used to be, let's call it five people at these registers, 10 people at these registers. Now it's one person at a register running 10 registers. And they're trying to do that exact thing with artificial intelligence. So now let's go over here and let's look at a list of jobs. I want you to screenshot this so you can have it for your own records. It says data entry clerk, customer service rep, proofreader, paralegal, AKA like helping out lawyers, right? For example, it says a bookkeeper, translator, copywriter, a market research analyst, social media manager, posting for you online, creating thumbnails, creating all different kinds of social media interactions, making tweets and things like that, right? Appointment scheduler, telemarketer, calling you up. Basically imagine artificial intelligence calling everybody in the United States all at the same time, having the same exact conversation where everybody answers the phone because it's just, one program doing it you don't have to hire so many different people to do it uh virtual assistant transcriptionist news reporter a news reporter travel agent tutor and imagine your travel agent is always ready always on call always checking the hotel prices always checking the air prices checking the checking all of these things for you finding out oh you know what historically eh, they doing graphs and stuff saying hey if you were to go at, and order it at this time on this day, then it's likely 89% chance that the price is going to go down, right? They'd be doing the statistics in the background for you. A tutor, technical support analyst, email marketer, content moderator, and a recruiter, but not just these jobs. Also higher level jobs. This is why Microsoft is spending so much money on it. Reuters posted an article even back in December 9th, 2022, and they said this, will chat GPT make lawyers obsolete? Hint, be afraid. That's crazy. That's crazy. Now, it's not necessarily that they would just get rid of all lawyers. It's like we were talking about with the cashier, where instead of having so many different lawyers and hundreds and hundreds and thousands of lawyers just having businesses, they can reduce and offer the same services 
because it can now be just like one cashier running 10 cash registers that are self-checkout, one lawyer running the whole business and just pushing you over to chat GPT to do things that can answer the questions for you legally. It's crazy, family. It's really crazy to think about. Now you got things like this, lsj.com.au saying chat GPT is putting the future of grad lawyers under the microscope. It's making it say, hmm, are there going to be enough spots? Is it going to be a service? Because remember, anybody who ever dealt with any legal kind of anything, really, especially in a civil case, family lawyers are extremely expensive. And if you could get a lawyer who says, hey, listen, I'll take you on. I got all of these different clients and I'm charging less because I'm giving the services. It's a lot easier on their end because they're using ChatGPT. This is a possibility going forward. It doesn't mean that it's ready now but this could happen in the future. So we want to pay attention to these things so that we can say, how do we make money with chat GPT? So we want to look towards stocks like Microsoft. Again, I'm not telling you to go and buy it. I can't give you financial advice. I don't know your personal financial situation, but I can tell you what I'm thinking and how I've been making money even before they got into this. So now let's keep it going. They're saying this chat bots like chat GPT could revolutionize not only the law field, but the medical field, and they're asking, could they eventually replace doctors? And again, it doesn't mean they're going to replace them all. When I want you to think about it, as in, instead of having all of these different doctors, now you just got the one cashier running the many different cash registers that are self-checkout. Exactly like that, but with doctors and with lawyers. So now we want to look at Microsoft because, again, they're pumping so much money into it. And now you got other billionaires pumping money into it. And Microsoft is owned 74% by institutions. That means that the people who have the most money in the market are betting with this company going forward. And then in the last quarter where we can see what was reported, it says that 388 million shares was picked up and only 139 million shares were decreased. So what is this family? These institutions do what's called rebalancing where they gotta let some go because Microsoft was running up so much in the last year compared to the other stocks that they gotta sell it and try to average down on their other positions, but they know you know what? This is a long-term banger. So they did a lot more buying than they did selling. So now let's look at what analysts think. And remember, they're not Nancy Pelosi. Oh, I said it right. I mean, I'm gonna get demonetized. They're not Pansy Nelosi, which means they can't tell the future. So look at this. They say in a crazy bull market, they can see it going to 350 from where it is now. And where is it right now? At 314. That's the stock price, right? That's a great come up for a long-term stock that you don't have to be so worried about. Is this company going out of business tomorrow, right? Like a penny stock, for example. Not saying that you should go and buy it. Let's be absolutely clear. Now, they're saying normally, though, a regular price in the current situation that we are in right now with the environment, if we don't hit a recession, they're saying 327, right? Which is 4% up higher. But they're saying if we hit a crazy bear market, it could lose over $100 in value and go basically to 200 down there, right? I dollar cost average into Microsoft, and I've been doing this for years. So then I ended up and I look at one of my accounts that I haven't seen in a long time, but I opened it up and I'm looking at it. I'm like, yo, wow, right? This is this is going well. I dollar cost average. If Microsoft is really, really high, I just buy it. If it's really, really low, I just buy it. And I hold on to it for a long time because I'm looking to hold on to it until retirement. And then I end up with results like this from long-term investing. So look at my account. You can see that in this one, and this is just one, right? This is my, this is not my main retirement account, but this is one of my accounts. I got 19 shares there, and then it's worth $6,200. And my average cost is $221, right? And it's currently $313. And I just been buying it regularly. So, like, let's say that I wanted to go out and buy Microsoft computers or Microsoft Office or anything like that, right? You could really think of it as in Microsoft already paid me $1,800. They're basically buying whatever I want because I bought their stock and then they returned me some of the profits because I own some of the company. In the United States, again, ownership is key. This is how you build generational wealth. You have to own things so you can pass it down to generations and be secure in your future. Now, I love y'all. I appreciate y'all. Hit the Moomoo link if you want to support the channel. Also be up on that information like I was telling you before, and I'll see you in the next one. Take care.